Um, Ian, thank you for taking the time to do this interview with me. Um, we'll just get straight into it. Um, you started your career with Leinster in 2009. Um, what's your highlights as a Leinster rugby player? Yeah, well, firstly, thanks very much for having me on. My pleasure. Um, so the highlights I've had in my career with, with Leinster, I suppose, uh, the easy ones to pick are when you've won trophies, So and, and especially when you've played. So the ones I hold dearest are probably the league wins where I played the majority of the league games and then went on and played in the semi-final and final. Um, and then with the, the European competitions, uh, even though it's probably the lesser of the two um, European competitions, I played in, the, in all three of the, the knockout games in the Challenge Cup um, and all three games were at home. So I hold those memories very fondly. Um, but yeah, those would be the standouts for my time at Leinster. Brilliant. Um, in 2013, you received your first International Ireland call-up. Um, what was your reaction to getting that message? Yeah, it was, it was just a dream come true. I, I felt like I'd been ready to play for Ireland for probably maybe six months or a year. And I think you, you want to feel that way. You don't want it to be a shock when you get called up to, to the Irish squad. You want to feel like you're ready. And I'd been lucky enough to be in some of the, the training camps with the Irish squad in the lead up to it. So I felt very comfortable with, you know, the game plan and the coaches and the players I was going to be playing alongside. So when I got the call up, you know, straight away, I was very nervous. Um, but it was really excitement. And, you know, ultimately it was, it was a dream come true to be able to put on that green shirt. Yeah. Um, you made 30 appearances between 2013 and 16. Obviously the law of the Irish rugby, once you move abroad, you can't play. But um, in 2013 to 16, you made 30 appearances, scoring 121 points. What was it like getting your first points for Ireland and getting such a big number of points? Yeah, it was great to you know get your first points on the board. Obviously, getting your first cap is a big moment, um, but getting your first points is, is a great kind of personal milestone to hit um yeah you know I've, I've i'm happy with the caps i've had but i'm still very hungry to get more and and hopefully now that i'm back in in ireland and playing for ulster maybe i'll i'll get into an irish squad at some stage uh, the world the last world cup in 2015 in england you were selected for that squad and um, what was the experience like getting the go and play in a world cup it was incredible like just it was always something you you dream of as a kid growing up. To, you know, you watch all the World Cups, how competitive those games are, seeing the best players take the field, representing their country, and um, I suppose it was probably the culmination of two two years of really hard work. With that being my number one goal to make that World Cup squad, um, and a, a part of it was a relief when I made the squad. You know, you put so much on it to then finally be chosen for it it's a kind of weight off your back it's like great I've ticked off that goal and then it's about kind of gritting your teeth and getting stuck into it and and, and enjoying you know the process of, of going to a World Cup and you know I certainly did that. Yeah and in 2016 you made the move from Leinster to Bordeaux in France and how did that move come about and what was your time like in France? Yeah so I'd, I'd obviously been in Leinster for I think seven or eight years at that stage and you know, I'd been, you know, a backup guy initially and then I was, you know, a starter for a few years and I loved that. And then I felt like I'd probably gone back a small bit and was backfilling a role of if there's a few injuries, I'd fill a spot or maybe I'm on the bench one week or starting the following week. And I just felt like I needed to challenge myself to go abroad and, and see if I could be that first choice guy. And, um, you know, I, I, I felt I probably needed to mature as well. So, the move away presented those opportunities and it was, it's been great to be able to travel to both um, to France and, and England and to be able to experience a different way of playing and different cultures and different language and meeting different people. So um, it's been a great experience. As you say, you moved over to England after a year in France. And what would you say the difference in the quality of rugby is when you compare France and England together? Yeah, the, like the quality is very high in both France and England. The, they're probably slightly different the way they approach games. You know, the French have a bit more of a kind of joue, joue and laissez-faire approach. Um, not as much structure and game plan. Um, but saying that, you know, there's fantastic athletes, you know, playing in, in the top 14 in France. Whereas in, in England um, and in the, the Gallagher Premiership, it's probably got more structure to it. So 
um, the games are, are a bit more physical. They're generally a lot tighter. You don't see teams pulling away as much. Um, and there's probably more tactical kicking as well. So that was probably the biggest adjustment I had to make when I went from France to England. During the summer of 2020, um, you obviously came back home, signed for Ulster. Um, how have you settled in so far? Yeah, I love it. Um, living in Belfast and I think it's a great city. You know, the, the, the supporters are always so friendly whenever I meet them out in the street and settled in really quickly with the players. Obviously, I knew a lot of them from either playing against them when I was at Leinster or playing with them in the Irish setup. Um, so it meant I didn't have to get to know, you know, 45, 50 guys. Um, when I arrived, I already knew probably half of them and the other half I knew of them and they might, might, might have known of me. Um, and similar with the coaching setup, you know, I'd previously worked under Dan McFarland when I was under 20. I'd played along, on, alongside Jared Payne and obviously I knew who Dwayne Peel was. So it was, it was, it was very easy to, to build up a relationship with him. So, um, no, look, I've, I've loved the move so far. It's, it's a shame that we haven't had supporters in, in en masse in, into Ravenhill, but that's something that's really exciting and something that I'm really looking forward to. One of your biggest moments with Ulster, I would say, is the semi-final against Edinburgh. Final minute of the game, you made that kick from, I'm sure, a good 50 yards out. What was going through your head at that time? Um, it was, yeah, look, it was a great moment and it was a, a culmination of, of, a, of a lot of hard work over a short space of time. You know, I'd, I'd just arrived in the club. I wanted to make a big impact and, and settle in as quickly as, as possible with, with the team. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it's unusual that an opportunity presents itself like that to, to be able to, you know, put your best foot forward and, and you know, make a big kick for your, for your team. But I think what was going through my head was, look, just stick to my technique and stick to my process. You know, I'd worked really hard in, in, in the preseason leading up to those group of games. And uh, the kicking coach came on and we just kind of stuck to my routine. And I was thinking, right, keep the head down, point my toe down, big, long follow through and just pray to God that this one goes over. And uh, lucky enough, I got a, you know, a, a good contact on it. And as I looked up, I knew it was going to have a good chance. And it just kind of worked its way back towards the post and luckily went over. So now, nah, look, it was, it was a great moment. Um, for me and for the team, you know, it was, it was disappointing not to win the final the following week, but there's no doubt we're getting closer and there will be trophies to come to Ulster in, in, in the next few years, no doubt. As, now, as you're with Ulster, what would you say to your biggest ambitions is especially having made the final last season? Yeah, like number one ambition is to win trophies, you know, we're, we're going well in the league this year. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work, whether we'll be in the Champions Cup or the Challenge Cup. But regardless of that, you know, I think they're, that's another trophy that we could potentially win. We have a young squad that's growing, um, you know, week to week and year to year. You know, we're definitely on a good upward, upward trend. And, you know, there's great ambition there within the players and the coaches that we are good enough to, to win trophies. And when we're at our best on a given day, we can beat anyone. So that's what we're working towards on a day-to-day -day basis. But um, yeah, look, I think everyone in, in Ulster and, um, would, would love to see us win a trophy. You yourself have been lucky enough to represent the famous Barbarians for a match. Um, what was that experience like? Yeah, it was great. It was, um, you know, a team like the Barbarians that are steeped in history to be able to pull on that black and white and, you know, enjoy a week of getting to know different players from different teams and, and playing a different style of rugby in a, in a one-off kind of test match was um, something I hold very fondly. And I'd love to get another chance to play with them if, if they, if they'd have me back. <laughs> um, on a game day, do you have any match day rituals? Yeah, I, I stick to a pretty, pretty similar routine. So, uh, the night before, I have the spaghetti bolognese. Um, you usually do a bit of stretching and a bit of rolling out in the evening. Wake up in the morning and I'll pretty much map out my day between stretching, rolling out, getting a sleep in if, if, if it's an evening game. Um, and then I like to get down to the stadium nice and early. I usually get down about four hours before kickoff and get in with the masseuse and the physio and start to limber up and then... I'll do my own exercises, um, get out, do some kicking, 
and then be there as the guys are arriving into the stadium. I love that kind of energy when they're coming in and everyone's a bit tense and a bit nervous and you, you know, you're high-fiving each other and getting ready to go out to battle. So, um, yeah, I've kind of had that routine. It's changed a bit over the years, but added stuff in and taking stuff out. But that's kind of where I'm at at the moment and, you know, I, I enjoy it. Growing up playing rugby, who would you say was your main idol? Uh, for me... Probably Ronan O'Gara, I'd say. You know, he was, he was the, one of the best players around at the time. He's a fantastic kicker. You know, playing out half, you'd always be looking up to who's doing the kicking and who's getting them over. And he was certainly one who did that. So, um, yeah, he'd be a pretty easy pick for me. You've played many as a rugby match. Um, but who would you say is the toughest player you've come up against on a rugby pitch? Um, it's a good question. Probably Marcel, I'd say. You know, it's even in training, like just coming up against him, he's just such a strong physical guy. He's got great footwork. He's the ability to go around you, go over you. Um, yeah, he's probably the toughest I've come up come up against. And then we'll flip that over. And who would you say is the best player you've played with on a rugby pitch? I always love playing with Simon Zebo. He's the kind of guy who he demand the ball all the time. He just wants you to give it to him. And I love playing with players who do that. You know, you just want to get their hands in the ball and back themselves and take guys on one-on-one. -on -one. And he was the epitome of that. Um, and he was also, you know, a real fun guy to be playing alongside. Um, he, you know, he'd be pumping up your tires. He'd making you feel good about yourself. And that's a great trait to have as a player. Um, what would you say has been your career highlight so far? Um, probably getting that kick in the semi-final. You know, I've I've I came over to Ulster. People, you know, I didn't have didn't have a great season the year the year leading up to going over to Ulster, and people were probably beginning to doubt me and going, "Look, is this guy any good?" And um, you know, I I knew I I'd, I'd put in a good body of work through the the lockdown with COVID, and I knew I was fit and, and well and ready to put my best foot forward, and it was nice to to be able to do that. So it was just, it was a big moment for myself and just to kind of feel like my confidence was coming back. You've scored some great tries in your career, but if you had to pick one that was your favourite, which try would you choose? Um, probably the one against Toulouse. I really enjoyed that one. It was just a, a lot of work went into it in the sense that we, we planned it during the week. We'd had one or two tweaks. You know, I'd been on text to, John Cooney telling him to run a certain line and James Hume to run a certain line. and You do that every week as a player, but a lot of the times it doesn't come to fruition in games. But this was one of those, one of those um, plays where it did work and it worked as we planned it. Um, now, John had set up the play in a way that he was certain that he was going to get the return pass and he was going to score the try. But luckily for me, he got taken out and I ended up getting on the end of the try, which was all the more sweeter. So... Um, nah, look, that was a, a, a it was a great team try, and to be able to get in on the end of that in a big game was was very satisfying. Um, if you weren't a professional rugby player, what what would you be? Um, it's a very good question. Maybe maybe a school teacher and and, and coaching in in a school would be something that I would have been interested. You know, in in the earlier years. Now, I don't know if that ship might have sailed, but. Um, I'm also involved with it with a, a company that builds privacy centres. So if the rugby ended for me tomorrow, I'd probably just um, go in with them and, and help sell the product. Um, with the Six Nations and then coming up in the next few weeks, um, do you hope to be in Andy Farrell's mind for selection? Yeah, I think every player playing in Ireland would, would love to be in that, in that Irish squad that, that's going to be named for the Six Nations. I think we've seen over the last few weeks, how well so many players are playing in Ireland and how competitive that's going to be. But I think like the majority of players, it's, it's my number one goal to get back into that Irish squad and, and um, I'll keep fighting to do that. Finally, um, if you could pick five players to play alongside past or present in your career that you've come up against or played with, who would you choose and why? So... I'd definitely go with Marcel up front, anyway, a bit of protection. Um, I always loved playing with Owen Redden. He played with Leinster a few years ago. He's a real kind of clever guy and um, 
just really smart how he went about games, always filled you up with confidence and gave you a great service with his pass. Um, Luke Fitzgerald, who was someone I played with in school and played with, with Leinster in Ireland, you know, really good footwork, strong guy, really good in the tackle, um, had unbelievable footwork. So, you know, having him outside me would be, would be good fun. I'd have James Hume with him in the centre, young up-and-coming centre for, uh, for Ulster. He's, I think he's a cracking player. Uh, and then out the back, how many is that? One, two, three, four, one more to pick. I'll go with Simon Zebo at the back. No better man. So uh, they'd be my five that I'd, I'd have in and I'd build, build the rest of the team around them. Ian, thank you very much for taking the time to do this interview. I really appreciate it and best of luck for the season ahead. Thanks very much. It's been great having, having, uh, having me on and I'm sure we'll do something like this in the future. Brilliant. Thank you very much.